about this point again on the channel that we sit down, we grab a coffee, and we chat through something in the endurance world. I've got something a little bit different today. We're not grabbing a coffee. We're actually getting a different beverage. What we've actually got is one of these. Prime hydration. It's popped up. It's taking the world by storm, particularly through social media, but more importantly, it's filtering its way into sports performance. So what we're going to do, we're going to head over the desk. We're going to break this down and assess and give you a clear idea as to is this a valid usable drink for sports performance, but more specifically for endurance. A lot of places and a lot of people online have already broken this down more broadly for exercise, general activity, things like that. No one's really touched on the impacts in terms of endurance performance, which is what we do. Cycling, running, triathlon, whatever it might be. We're out there for long periods of time. So hydration is critical, yeah? Is this something that can replace what we're already using or are there better solutions out there? Why or why not? Let's head over to the desk, find out. All right, so for context, what is this prime drink? If you don't know uh, who's heading it up, there's a couple of social media stars. Uh, you can Google them online, Logan Paul, KSI. They've dipped their toe in to the hydration or sports hydration world by developing this drink uh, in combination, I'm sure, with some, some people around them. Clearly a, a pretty lucrative business uh, venture for them. And I guess why it's become interesting is because they've signed on this prime uh, hydration as the official hydration partner of some pretty big players in the sport performance and professional sporting world. We're talking elite top tier soccer clubs, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Arsenal. We're talking about the UFC Ultimate Fighting Championship, arguably one of the biggest money makers and sports entertainment um, companies in the world. And then the Los Angeles Dodgers in the Major League Baseball have all signed on. Interesting they've not gone down the endurance path, which I've always thought with hydration-based beverages, drinks that are trying to improve your hydration, electrolyte-focused, etc., endurance would make sense to go down that path. They haven't gone there yet, and I think there's probably some reason for it, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So what I want to do before we get stuck into this specifically, what's in this prime drink, um, and whether it works or not, I just want to give some fundamentals on the sweating side of things. All right, so from a sweating side of things, I went through and did a quick little summary from some of my notes I had existing, some literature studies I did some looking up um, to find some average numbers for you to give you some context. So when we sweat, major thing that we lose is fluid. Everyone is pretty familiar with that. As we heat up, we're trying to maintain a body temperature. We release fluid from the inside of the system to the outside. That evaporates off the skin and takes heat with us. We've mentioned that on, our, uh, on the channel here before. It's a process called thermoregulation and evaporative cooling as a way of maintaining body temperature. We need to go through this process to be able to keep functioning internally. Now, when we do lose that fluid, if you've ever been out there training and a little bit has dripped down the side of your face and into your mouth, I know it's a little bit gross, but you've probably tasted it and realized that, hey, there's a little bit of a salty taste to this fluid. It's not just water coming out. We have electrolytes coming out as well. Now, that's a term you might be familiar with, and essentially electrolytes just serve various processes within our system. Um, some of them have got to do with fluid balance, some aid in terms of muscular contraction. They have their different functions and they're important in terms of making us work as humans and allowing us to then do things like exercise, training, racing, etc. We do sweat. Yes, we lose the fluid, but typically the average male can lose anywhere between 450 to 1800 milligrams per liter of sodium. Sodium is one of the major components and that's why your sweat does taste salty. The other major electrolyte we lose is chloride. And if you remember back to high school chemistry um, and really early days, NaCl or sodium chloride is fundamentally salt. Uh, so that's why we're getting that salty taste, but those are the two majors. And when we add up across the board averages, you're gonna look at all electrolytes, you're probably losing up to about 3,400 milligrams of electrolytes in one liter of fluid. And as a result, the breakdown of that means we're losing about 53% via sodium. So 53% of our electrolyte loss is coming from sodium, 35% from chloride, and then everything else is really quite low. Potassium, 9.5% nine, nine roughly. Everything else is sort of 1% or less. Magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, etc. So typically we're looking at sodium being the big player here. Sodium is the major one we're losing, chloride a little bit, everything else is pretty minimal and realistically pretty insignificant. Um, you might notice in a lot of different sports drinks, they have some of these other electrolytes, but nowhere near the same concentrations as sodium because sodium is the one we're losing most of. And it makes sense. Whatever we lose most of, we wanna be replacing most of. We lose lots of fluid, we wanna be putting a lot of fluid back in. We lose lots of sodium, we wanna do the same. So that's a bit of a fundamentals background, and I guess the, the composition and science behind the composition of sweat to give you some context before we break down what this prime drink is doing. 
So if we're looking at sodium being the biggest electrolyte, surely that would be a really big component of a drink that is targeted at trying to rehydrate you. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, prime hydration bangs on from a marketing perspective and, and the guys on social media are banging on about how it has 834 milligrams of electrolytes um, and that that is a great way to rehydrate you. When you break it down and understand what is within those electrolytes, out of that 834, you would hope that sodium was the biggest player and had the most. In actual fact, it has a really, really small amount. You look in a 500 mil bottle here on the back, 10 milligrams of sodium, very, very, very low salt, basically, um, which already doesn't really make much sense. If we're trying to rehydrate ourselves and we know that fluid is important and sodium replenishment is important because they're the major things we're losing, so we want to try and get something back in, 10 milligrams is not going to cut it. Um, we said before, you can, average male is losing somewhere potentially up towards 1,800 milligrams per litre. Um, 10 milligrams is going to leave you in a huge deficit. Now, in short duration type stuff, like something like soccer, for the example, 90 minutes, um, in hot environments, I can guarantee 10 milligrams is still not going to cut it. But then if we're exaggerating that out or extrapolating that out to our endurance athletes, what we talk about here on this channel, we're talking about things that go for four, five, 10 hours, long periods of time. If you had 10 milligrams uh, in every 500 mil of fluid, it's just going to be nowhere near it. You're definitely going to run into some issues whether it be cramping or largely just fluid retention or ability to retain fluid, you're going to run into some problems and things are going to start shutting down after a while. So already just not going to cut it. And I, I guess that's, we could probably end the video here really because that's really a fundamental flaw of what this product was is targeted, I guess, at doing or what they're saying it should do, um, but it's not actually doing it uh, in the way that we need it to. So where does the electrolyte then come from? If 10 milligrams of sodium, 834 milligrams of electrolytes total has to be coming from somewhere somewhere else. And it is, it's largely potassium. About 700 of that 834 milligrams is potassium. And we said very low concentration of that will be lost in sweat. Okay, we might wanna replace a little bit, but it's an excessive amount if we're looking at rehydration. Your body's just gonna, I guess, kind of waste it and just get, get rid of whatever it doesn't need. So to that point, it's not really doing a lot. You'd actually probably be better off drinking water and then taking your gels and bars and things like that, which will have a bit of sodium in it if you wanted to get more than the 10 milligrams uh, without the excessive need uh, as well. Electrolyte wise, it's just missing the mark. Now the other major claim uh, that Prime make as to why they might be better than other products on the market, and important to understand an additional component, not just what we're trying to replace, but well, there's different types of sports drink on the market. They compare themselves to things like Gatorade, which really when it breaks down to it is an unfair comparison because Prime is sort of putting themselves out there saying, hey, we don't have much carbohydrate. We're looking at just rehydrating you. Gatorade's excessive because it's got all these carbs that you don't need. Now, they're two different drinks. We have what we call hypotonic solutions, which is very, very low carbohydrate. You can get variants of Gatorade, things like that. Precision hydration is one that's popped up in the endurance world. Um, and being really quite successful and a lot of athletes really love using it. I've got a lot of athletes that really love using precision and get some great results with it. Very, very low carbohydrate, high amount of sodium. I mean, you look at some of their mixes, 500 milligram, 1000 milligram and 1500 milligram, they're in dissolvable tablets, for example, um, really high amount of sodium. The point of that is to rehydrate you. So yeah, this having low carbohydrate, I think it's what, six, six grams of carbohydrate in a 500 mil solution isn't trying to refuel you, but that's what a Gatorade is trying to do. So we've got two different drinks. So when they're doing comparisons, that's again, another flaw in this whole process from a sports performance side of things is we're comparing apples to oranges. We're not comparing like for like. If we were to compare this to a precision, I take 500 mils of precision, you get one, one tablet in a 500 mil solution at their lowest, their lowest level of sodium. You get 500 milligrams of sodium at precision, you get 10 milligrams in this. It's just not even a, it's not even a fair comparison on their part. Um, Precision's absolutely smashing them. And there's other brands that do it as well. Um, I personally have used things like Hydrolite before just because it's simple and easy to use. Like you get about 276 milligrams in a 200 mil solution. So from a, from a replenishment standpoint, if we're looking at hypotonic solutions, low carb purposes, rehydration, this just doesn't cut it. It's not getting what we back back in what we need, um, and there are far better options on the market that are probably far cheaper as well. Um, 
and again, we'll get to taste in a moment, potentially to taste better, that are doing what you actually need it to do in terms of replenishing the appropriate proportions of electrolytes. So then it's like, well, what is the purpose of having something that has high carbohydrate, what we call an isotonic, like a Gatorade, Powerade, etc.? Well, that's to do multiple things. Yes, it might not have as much electrolyte in it, but it's got carbohydrates in it. So it's trying to refuel you as well. And that's where the purpose of those drinks still holds true. Like, I would absolutely, based on the information that we've already sort of gone through and a quick summary here, I'd absolutely be choosing a Gatorade over a Prime every day of the week. Um, because in all of our sports, carbohydrates are a critical component of being able to generate the work and the energy we need. We need the fuel in our system, especially over long periods of time as we deplete our carbohydrate stores. We need to top those up regularly to continue to work. Um, if we're talking someone who just leads an active lifestyle, not training for anything, you probably don't need and you definitely don't need a lot more carbohydrate. And that's where, yeah, a lower carbohydrate drink makes a bit more sense. Um, if you're just going to the gym, sweating a little bit, doing a hit class, but you, like you're fueling it up enough week, uh, week to week, day to day, you don't need the supplementation of carbs and quick carbs in that session. But we want the fluid replacement and try and get something back in uh, to keep us hydrated and just generally healthy. Okay, this might fall a little bit more in that category. But as I said, it's still not ticking off our fluid uh, balance requirements and what we're actually losing in sweat anyway. So regardless of if you're at that level, it's not getting back in really what you need. And you'd be better off to be completely honest, just drinking water uh, and then having an extra little bit of salt uh, on your next meal. Like that would be a simpler and more beneficial solution um, in that isolated circumstance than drinking one of these. And there's always gonna be a market for it. I think it's not in sports performance. I think it's definitely more in just the day-to-day, -day, every everyday person who doesn't uh, use it. So what would I use? Not this, be using something like a Hydrolyte, a Precision, um, but ultimately where it comes down to it, you need to use what is appropriate for what you're trying to put back in. And so if your goal is to get some more carbs in, go for a Morton, go for a Powerade, go for a Gatorade, something that's gonna have carbohydrates. If your goal is purely hydration, we wanna go for that higher sodium concentration, um, not necessarily go excessive. And I think it's really important to understand what your sweat profile looks like. The numbers that we've mentioned here are based on some averages seen in the literature. Some people are gonna be higher, some people are gonna be lower. Typically, it's sort of broadly recommended that you only really need to replace 25 to 50% as well during. So if you're losing 1,800 milligrams, you might not need to replace 1,800 milligrams for every liter of fluid you're losing. You might only need to replace 25% of that, but that's still way more than what this drink is actually adding to try and achieve. Before we get to a couple of questions, I may as well taste it, hey? Let's see what this actually, um, actually tastes like. It's kind of got like an opaque color to it. I'm not gonna be able to show you because the bottle's all covered up, which I think is a bit strange. It smells incredibly sweet. Um, I got this flavor, this is the ice pop flavor. I got it because it was the cheapest one. I didn't really wanna have to pay a lot because of my gut feel, it wasn't gonna work and I wasn't gonna like it. Um, it smells really sweet, it smells kind of weird. It tastes incredibly sweet. So basically because it's got six grams of carbohydrate that has to be all artificial sweeteners which for most of you are probably going to hate that um and i definitely don't really like it um there's a whole bunch of other things it says it's got antioxidants it says it's got b vitamins and uh, branch chain amino acids bcaa's all of that's kind of just a load of filler rubbish stuff um, marketing spin like it's not really going to be a game changer for <laughs> For anyone like if you're drinking this regularly you're drinking it because you maybe like the taste and you want it as just a day-to-day -day drink and um yeah it's not it's not great um each to their own that's probably my personal opinion i haven't tasted the other flavors they might be a bit different but questions to follow up on here one have you tried this used it i'm interested in your thoughts um but secondly, the probably more interesting one is what are you using to rehydrate? I think it's really interesting to see what athletes are using and what their strategies are. So let's get discussion going down below. What are the products? Um, why are you using them? And I guess, what have you found with those? Like, are you using precision and have you found it to be really useful? What concentrations are you using? And I guess a bit of reasoning why. You're really interested to hear your thoughts uh, on some different components. Do you choose something because of the flavor or lacking flavor? Some of the products have no flavor to them. Um, some have very subtle flavors. Have you been using a mix that's more hypo, hypotonic, so low carb or isotonic? And have you considered maybe based on what we've talked about here, changing up the mixes of fluids? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it's gonna be a really interesting discussion. To put a bullet point on it, don't use Prime for endurance. Um, 
if you want to go try it, feel free, but I wouldn't be taking this out on a ride with you. And I don't think this is going to be out on course anytime soon uh, at an Ironman marathon, anything like that. It's just not going to cut it. Apart from anything, it's just kind of expensive um, for the amount that you get. So that's my summary there. Hopefully it answered a few questions for a few people who, who contacted me wanting me to make a video on this and check it out and give my thoughts. That sparks my ideas around the fluid balance side of things as well. I'm gonna leave it there for today. I'm definitely not gonna finish this. I'm gonna go grab myself a coffee actually because that will taste a hell of a lot better. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.